All right, this is the uh, the Zoke video I said I'd make for you guys. Uh, this is a KX65 leg. It is old style. Um, they're both the same in the way that you rebuild them, so it's not going to be any different if you're doing a second gen set of Zokes. Um, just your norm. This is the rebound leg. Uh, we're going to run 10 weight in it because generally on the rebound leg, um, it seems they just perform better for me with a thicker weight than the seven and a half weight. Um, the tools you'll need, you'll need a 27 millimeter uh, for the top cap to get it off. You'll need a 19 millimeter wrench. Uh, you'll see why in the video. Um, you know, screwdriver and a pick, that helps a lot. And uh, we're gonna get this going here. Uh, my buddy Cam's with me. This is actually his his leg, is not mine. Um, he's gonna videotape for me. So we will start the easiest way to get these the top cap off. Uh, if you don't crack them before you take them off the bike, is you can slide them into a set of two into your clamps you got there. Uh, if they're on the bike, uh, well, it's a little bit more difficult that way, but. It is what it is. Um, what did I do with that Allen key socket? Uh, it's a six millimeter Allen key socket for the uh, for the clamps. You only really need to tighten one, but I'll do two just to be fancy. Sometimes they're hard, sometimes they're not. This one was nice and easy. Um, a lot of times they are hard, but uh, I just put it in the clamp so that you don't have to, no matter what it is, you don't have to fight it. First step you're gonna wanna do you also need a uh, an oil bin to uh, drain your drain your oil out into something somewhere for it to go. But you want to unscrew your top cap here. All right, don't be scared. It's just a spring and some oil. Uh, we're gonna get a fresh lint-free rag. <coughs> you want to use go to the paint aisle and get yourself some lint-free rags. It'll keep you know all the lint from the rag out, out of your oil and your valving and all that stuff. Um, this part's a little difficult, especially if you've got the stronger springs. Uh, you're gonna want to just the top cap here, the spacer, the spring. I'm pulling down on the spring to create a gap here, and you'll see why. Get your uh, 19 millimeter wrench ready and close because this is not easy. Pull that down and you're gonna see there's a slot here for a wrench to go. And it's gonna hold this spring while I wanna do some work here. Okay, so now that's holding the pressure of everything. So this top cap can be undone. Take your top cap. Oh, that one's tight. And loosen her up. Make sure you don't knock your teeth out when you do that. I use my neck to hold the wrench. It's the easiest way I've found to do it uh, on my bench here. Caps off. <clears throat> this is just the dampening rod. This is basically what the, uh, the screw on the top here for your plus and minus on your rebound. This is what it controls. And this goes down into the valving. And, and moves the, uh, the shims around to make the magic happen. Now, I'm gonna pull this down again, the spring, to get the wrench out so I can continue my job here. Just pull that out of there. Okay, now you've got your spacer, your spring spacer. Some people dick with these to change the characteristics of the forks. You really need to know what you're doing if you're gonna be doing stuff like that. Um, just because it, it changes everything on the fork, the characteristics of everything, messing with anything really. Um, you're gonna pull your spring out. This is pretty simple, pretty simple transaction here. Now this is your actual tube that runs in your cartridge and you can see how that 
it still has some resistance to it. There's still some fluid in here. Some of it maybe might have leaked out, but uh, this fork was pretty dry. So I, uh, I dump out what I can right here, um, just so that you're kind of working with, you can work the, uh, the inner tube on the cartridge back and forth and kind of get some oil out of here. Um, it's, it's inevitable that as you're doing this, you're gonna get oil uh, in places. So have your pig mat out, whatever, whatever have you, or if you're messy, you can, you know, do it right on your kitchen table. It's up to you. But uh, we just use the pig mat here. So I kind of just get out what I can. And then uh, we're gonna get to work here. I like to Put, you know a double down so that when you flip this over all the oil that's coming out of it you know will kind of not pull on your countertop or whatever um the next part you got to be careful uh the reality of it is is that if you slip and and you gouge the stanchion it's it's over but uh the way you want to do this is this is a really you know a little pocket screwdriver and you kind of just you kind of just want to work this Work this around, free it out until you get the movement. You'll feel like there's a lip in there and it comes past that lip. And once it's past that lip, you're home free. That comes off, that's your dust seal right here. That's the lowest seal on the uh, system here. Um, now you're gonna take it, you're gonna dump her upright and uh, let's we'll see if we can get you in there. Uh, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see that or not, but there's a, there's a clip in there and there's little divots in it. And uh, you're gonna take a pick. This is where the pick comes in handy. And you'll see the divot in there and you just kinda, you just kinda work her out. Pull one side out there. See all this fluid that's coming out down here? That's why I double up this, double this up, triple it up, whatever you gotta do to make it uh, happen. And then I stick this in this side. You get that side up. And then once you do that, generally she'll come out. There's the clip so you can kinda see it. I'm not gonna pull it off the stanchion because again, you do not want to scratch this surface. As, as clean as you can keep it and scratch free is what you want. Um, now the next part uh, is where people get a little bit nervous. Um, you're, it's, you just, you're gonna, this is the slider and the stanchions down here. You are going to basically ram this off of the stanchion. It pops the lower bushing out of here and the seal and everything, um, you'll see. So. So you're just gonna take your grip on here. It might take a couple, it might only take one. Um, this is it, and it's out. Now right here, all you've got left is the, uh, is the tube. You can see the light through it. That's all that's in there. Um, if you wanna do an anodizing job, this would be the point <clears throat> which you would fill up a uh, you know container with lye and water, dump this bitch in there, and, uh, and get all of this off of it and uh, then you would polish it and uh, send it out to your anodizer and, and get it nice and fresh looking. Um, kind of as you go, you know, keep things clean, trying to not attract lint from anything or dirt, make sure your work area is clean. Don't be doing this like in a filthy spot where you work on your RC cars or something or whatever whatever you're doing. But um, I clean out the, uh, the tube as best as I can. You can see there's some, you know, filth in there and you kind of just want to, you want to get all that out as much as you can. Um, I try to stay away from using any type of aggressive cleaner on the tubes. Uh, I know, you know, lye is like definitely aggressive, but the less damage you do, the better. Um, Cause I, I just don't want to, yeah, I don't want to cause any problems in here. So just keep it as clean as you can. And uh, usually use the damping rod. You can stuff this in here. Use the damping rod to uh, to send her all the way through. Make sure you're not, you know, nicking up the sides or anything. And just pull her right out the bottom. All right. So from there, now you've got all of your. This is this is the cartridge right here. 
Um, that is, it's still in there. I choose not to take it out. You can take it out if you want. If you do want to take it out, there's an Allen key bolt on the bottom of the lower lug. And you, you unbolt that and that whole cartridge will slip out. Um, I don't see a need for it unless you have an issue. Um, so the, we're going to start by, you got to take off this top bushing. Um, you can do it with your hands. Just simply put your, put your fingernails in there and uh, just slide her off of the uh, tube. And uh, you can see inside of this bushing, there is definitely some wear, um, but that is the inside. And uh, this part is what slides on the outside. So this bushing is actually still in good shape. Um, the bottom bushing, this locks in the tube. So this is the outside. So you're not worried about this surface so much as you are worried about this inside surface, which both of these bushings are flawless bushings. Um, they're not bad. This, this one is the one that stays on the tube and actually moves up and down in the tube and keeps the top of the stanchion in line in here. That's like your, your, your bearing more or less. Um, but, uh, this one is what, when you pull the tube apart, that's what it's pulling out. It's basically pulling this out of its press fit, which it's not in there very hard or anything. It's just, that's what you're yanking out. And uh, this one locks in the tube, so the inside surface, which is the opposite of the top bushing, is the one that you're worried about on this bushing. Um, and these, like I said, are both flawless. But Cam has new, new bushings, uh, so we are gonna go that route. He bought his from Intech, um, part numbers. 1152352. That's the outer fork bushing. The inner fork bushing is 1151352. And then for the uh, fork seal kit, this is SKF. That's what we like to use. Uh, they seem to be the best. Uh, 1150352. Five two, and that that's for one side, guys. So don't buy a set and think you're gonna do both of your forks, uh, your fork legs, with one kit. You have to have two kits. So like, if you go on eBay, make sure it's it's a double set, or if you're buying them singularly, make sure you get two because that's the way it works. Um, after the bushings are off, you have this this washer here, or space, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's very it's pretty much a washer. This is what holds that bottom bushing in the tube once you put the snap ring on. Um, then you can have your actual seal that holds the fluid in the fork leg. This you can just pop right off. You don't have to be worried about these because they're coming off um, and going in the garbage, obviously. Here is the snap ring that goes inside the fork tube to hold the lower seal and the lower bushing in. Um, and here's the dust seal. This is what keeps all the crap out of the inside. Just slide it right off. That's pretty worn. These look like factory uh, factory Marzacci seals. Uh, they're generally, they're just their black seals that they've always had. Um, now at that point, I'm gonna clean everything up again. Just make sure this is as clean as possible. Now, um, the next step uh, is putting the seals, obviously, back on. Um, to do this, you want to buffer this edge so that it doesn't ruin the new seals. Uh, the way that I do this at home, uh, you know, I'm trying to do this without special tools to show you that you can do this at your house if you want to. Save yourself a little bit of money and uh, buy some BBR parts or spend it at Keystone or what have you, whatever you want to do, uh, factory mini bikes. Um, and you're going to wrap this, make sure you go a little bit above the top of the stanchion so that it, it kind of gives you, you know, a buffer zone for when you're sliding on the top. And then just go down, you'll see there's two ridges, top ridge, bottom ridge that holds the top bushing. And uh, that's it. Now, to put the seals back on. Just 
So there's your two seals. The, uh, of course, springs off of this one. No big deal. Slide it right back on. Um, the next step is you're gonna wanna put a little bit of lubrication on these and you're gonna use fresh fork oil. Um, in the left leg, we used Spectro 7.5 weight. Um, that was for the, uh, the compression leg. Um, Cam likes his a little bit softer. Uh, I generally go 10 weight in my older styles oaks on both legs. Um, I use Maxima fork oil 10 weight. Uh, in my eyes, they're really all the same. I, uh, I've used different brands and I don't really see too much of a difference, but I've heard that the race tech fluid uh, is very highly rated. They say it's good stuff. If, you, if you're one of those kind of people that likes to spend the extra cash, I change my fork fluid pretty often, so I'm not worried about how long the stuff's gonna last. I just want it to work. Um, so we're gonna open this up and we're gonna start with the bottom seal. This is the dust seal. Looks like that. We're gonna get a little bit of some fluid on there. Make sure it's nice. And you take it, slide it right on there. Go down to the bottom. Next, you're gonna put your ring on. This is what holds in the, the upper seal, but actually seals the leg for the fluid, not the dust seal. This is the fluid seal. So we're going to put some some fluid on this one too. Get this going on nice and easy. Yeah, right over that electrical tape there. It works great. Pull that down. And uh, now your next order of business is this guy. Just wipe it down real quick. Now we're going to put on the uh, the new bushings that uh, Cam got from Intec. Come up. There's one bushing. These are the old ones that we're getting rid of. Show you what a fresh bushing looks like uh, just so you can see that's that's an upper bushing so see how that's just fresh copper this is the surface that will be riding inside the tube so this is the one you're concerned about on this this upper bushing the lower bushing this locks in the tube so as you can see the outside's copper instead of, of the inside being copper because the wear surface on this one as it stays fixed is the is the inside so that has a nice fresh gray coating um <clears throat> to put those on you got you got to pop off your electrical tape so i'll just pull this off of here real quick and uh i'm gonna put on the lower bushing now uh again kind of put some fluid on this guy because um, it is going on a raw stanchion. That would be nice now. And then your top bushing, I put some on the inside anyways because it's going to be at the top of the stanchion tube here, you're, you're going to be pushing it on so it'll prevent it from uh, gouging or having any issues. Um, <clears throat> stand your tube up, spread this apart with your fingers. Get around there when you get to that point, use your fingernails. There you go. She's on the top of the tube now. So now you're about ready to go back together. So to prep for that, that that bushing up here slides in inside of this tube. So you wanna make sure, obviously I wipe this out. So I'm gonna put some more oil in there. Um, just take your finger, you know, dab it up, make it nice. Put it on both sides. Just like that. 
Take that. Kind of lube up your top here. Nothing crazy. Now, you're going to take your tube extension. Slide it right back in there. So now at this point, <clears throat> you're back in and you need to push the lower bushing back into the tube. Um, this is the point where, you know, a lot of guys have a special tool to, uh, to drive this on there, but, uh, you don't need it. And I'm going to show you how. So you got the washer here and I just pushed the bushing inside of the tube. I uh, put that, that washer down on top of there. This is my, my special tube. This is a cardboard tube I had lying around my house. Uh, I cut it and made it work. It's a little bit thicker. It's not like, you know, it's not a paper towel roll or anything, but you can find something similar, a piece of PVC, make your own driver. You don't gotta buy the drivers on eBay or whatever. Take this bad boy, get her right in there. See how she's in there now? I got my tube under here, she's really dropping some fluid. And uh, we're gonna push that in. That's all it took. It's, it's not much pressure. That's it. She's in there. Okay, so now the next uh, order of operation here is put some uh, lube on this seal. And uh, you're gonna do the same thing. Drive this girl in there with the uh, homemade driver here. Just let it sit to the outside of the tube and uh, give her a push. So if she's in there, you just want to make sure it's good so you can get the snap ring on. All right, there you go, that seals in. Now we got to put the clip back in. This is what holds everything down here. Um, I generally do this with my hands. Uh, some guys, you know, might want to use a tool or whatever. I just do it with my fingers. And then I take the pick and I go down the rest of the way. So you don't want to, uh, obviously, you don't want to poke, poke a hole in your in your brand new seal. So I'm obviously laying this flat and just getting it down in there and uh, try not to make a mistake there. It might cost you. Um, wipe the tube up here again. Make sure this is all kind of clean. And uh, we're gonna put some more fluid on this seal. So she goes in nice and easy. Um, I usually dry these on with my, my hands because normally that they can just be pushed on. Um, unless you have a messed up tube or something. I've never had one I couldn't push on. So there you have it for that part of actually replacing the seals, bushings, all that good stuff. Now she's back together and you've got your, you were back to talking about the cartridge again. So we're going to do another, just try and get everything out of here that we can. Um, the positive of taking the cartridge out, uh, if your fluid's dirty, like actually looks bad and it's, and it's filthy, you want to take the cartridge out because you can fully pump every bit of fluid out of it that you want to. Um, this gets most of it out, but there is still a little bit that's going to be trapped in there. Okay. Now that we did that, we can let this drop back in here. Um, your what fluid you're going to use? Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit, but I don't really want to like tell people what to run. Um, Marzacci recommends seven and a half weight from the factory. So technically, if you have 50 uh, kilogram springs and you use the 7.5 weight and it's failed properly like these forks were built by PAX uh, most likely they're probably they're probably failed properly um, 10 weight uh, cams uh, like a, around a 200 pound guy so generally for anybody over you know I, if I had to guess I'm not saying like I'm not a suspension guy so like I'm just trying to show you as much as I can but I would think that if you're over like 170 pounds, you're going to start wanting to think about maybe a little bit heavier fork weight. You kind of want to stick around with what Marzacci recommends if the valving's proper. 
putting heavier fluid in really is a band-aid to having the forks properly built but if you can't find springs you kind of got to deal with what you're dealt so I, I would like you to rather have options than not have options at all or even know what you can do to uh, change the feeling of your fork you put it together it's too soft you can take it apart back to this point and change the fork, the fork fluid, the, the your viscosity, and just keep playing with what you want until you get dialed in, and that's the way it works. And it's not easy, but that's how you do it. Um, so now I'm gonna open my fresh, my fresh fork fluid. All right. We're gonna take it, and uh, you just you know you keep the, the stand, you keep the uh, slider all the way down on the stanchion. See how it's it's bottomed at the bottom of the fork there. Um, the measurement I use, uh, feel uses 95 millimeters on their on their fluid level. So when I say 95 millimeters, what I mean is I have this set for 65 millimeters. Okay, so when I measure this out, I flip this over like this, and I put this in here, and I measure down and see if it hits this. And if it does, once it hits this tip, I'm at 65 millimeters. Um, I've tried running 95 millimeters. I like the 65 better, which is what PAX runs theirs at. Um, so that's what I went with. Uh, you could choose whatever you want. If they're too crazy when you put them together or too hard or too much rebound, you can take some fluid out. You can go back to 95 if you tried 65. Um, we're gonna do 65 today. So I'll show you how to do that. You just want to start by getting the fluid in here first. Um, I the first time you can fill up to the top of the stanchion because it's it's going to go down. Uh, it's once you can see the fluid, you pump this cartridge to get all this air out of here. And if you look down inside the uh, the tube, I don't know if Cam can get that view for you, but if you look down inside of that tube, you can see that right now you can't see any fluid. So that, that's, you're trying to achieve getting to the top of this. You'll see once it starts getting closer, but at this point, you don't wanna just go dumping you know, a ton of fluid at one time. You kinda of wanna take your time with this, fill it, pump it, fill it, pump it. You'll feel this cartridge with your hands. You'll feel the air. When, when, you're, when you're doing this and you're bleeding the air out of it, you will feel when the air comes out of it and when it feels nice, and smooth all the way through the stroke. Like, see, this one might have a tiny bit of air left at the top, but we're getting pretty close to blood here. It does not take much. This feels really nice in the stroke. This is a good feeling fork. Um, if you have a cartridge with worn out seals, you'll know because it won't feel right. Um, it'll feel, you know, if, if you let this go, see that? If the cartridge has a seal issue, this thing will, when you let go, it'll right back in, you know, not maybe not that drastic, but you get my point and that it'll fall back pretty quickly if there's a seal issue or if you're too thin on fluid for your valving, uh, things like that. Um, you know, you kind of got to play around with your fork sets. Um, not, like I said, I'm not a suspension tech. I have, you know, a lot of sets of Zokes, so I've had to learn because if I didn't, it was going to cost me an arm and a leg to uh, pay somebody to do it. So um, at this point, I'm getting close to the height that I wanna be. So I'm gonna continue adding fluid and working on getting my height here. I'm gonna bleed this again now. Oh, it feels wonderful throughout the entire stroke. There is no, no slack in this fork at all, no dead spots in the cartridge. It's very, like you can see I'm putting some pressure in that. You can feel that there's drag resistance. That's a beautiful feeling leg there. Now, since we're close, I'm gonna take my tool. I put it in there, pull it back out, see if we got fluid. We do have fluid. We are barely on the end of this stick, so it's perfect. It is literally right there. So that's that in my book is close enough um, to the 65 millimeter mark. Um, this tube's hollow, best way for me, because the fluid's so clear, so you don't really, it's hard to see it on anything that you're using for a measuring stick, unless you got something like wooden, or I don't know, whatever you're using, but 
I can literally hear it touch the fluid when I blow through there. So, um, at the next point here, you're going to put this up. Now you're getting ready to put your spring and everything back in. Uh, the one thing I can't stress enough, if you take this rod out, because you're going to want to, obviously, we did that at the beginning, but if you don't, when you go to dump your oil, it's just going to dump out your oil and make a mess, and, and you just get all this gunk all over your rod. So do not forget to put this in there. Um, I've done it before and put the top cap on and had the zilk all the way together, and, and I was mad because I had to, to take it back apart. But you can literally see this. You push down on it that that screw you're turning at the top is slowly pushing down on this and changing how this see how much resistance is on this now with the rebound all the way down and i take it out now it's easier that's that's the literal form of how it works it is that simple guys um so you know you can you can manipulate this to a certain extent if you want to um i I run them all the way down, it should be tight. Um, some guys, maybe if you want to get a little bit less uh, pressure on your spring, um, you, you could run it up a little bit, but in my book, you run it down. So we're going to put the spring on here now. Now this part can be a little bit tricky because if the rod falls on you, you know, you don't get it before, you know, you don't get it before this, the spring drops, you kind of got to be quick there. You got to put it down and just grab the thing. Um, then at this point, I have everything ready that I need to have to do the spring again. So your 19 millimeter, your spacer, and your cap, get everything close. Um, you're going to want to pull this spring down again. So pull that down, get your spacer, put that on there, keep pulling. Yep. Yeah, it's a little challenging, um, but you'll get it. Especially if it's 50, the 50 springs, they are, they are strong. Um, here's another little pro tip about these forks that I've learned on my own. Uh, just messing with them. Um, I have to find the Allen key for it. But uh, on the side of the cap here, you'll see an Allen key bolt right in there. It's very small. That is the tension of a spring. Uh, where is the, oh, here we go. That is the tension of a spring and a ball that sits up against that. That has it has a detent in there, and uh, it allows you to set the tension more or less on this with this with this little Allen key. And uh, a lot of times these things they get really hard to turn and uh, people end up snapping them off. And if you snap them off, man, I, I've been there and uh, you'll have to buy another set of forks. So I run mine uh, to steal the cap off of to fix this. So I run mine just in there a little bit, pretty clear, close to the edge, but, but still in there a little bit. And then the ball, very nice and easy. You can hear the click real well, works wonderfully. So uh, they were a little tight before. But that's my little trick for that. So now, make sure you got your, make sure you got your rod in there. Don't mess that up. And put the old cap on there. And uh, so this one on this set, in particular, it has to be ran back a little bit to make it plumb out with the top of the cap. Um, so you can tighten this together. This is basically, you don't need to go crazy on this stuff. I've had a set that I had a really hard time getting apart. This does not need to be wicked tight. Just, you know, like your general two finger tight, okay? Now this part, slide your stanchion back up, or your uh, slider back up. Screw your top cap in. You can tighten these up a little bit better, obviously, when they're in the clamps. I don't go crazy right here. They don't need to be crazy tight. 
uh, you know, just snug, a good tension. Um, now we clean this all back up. There's nothing to be scared of in here. It's just fluid and some seals and some bushings. It's really not that difficult. Uh, I'd say the hardest part, honestly, is taking your spring and stuff apart on the top. Um, you know, now you put her on the ground, you give her the old, oh yeah. That feels perfect. And uh, that's set pretty back. Um, you know, if you like a lot of rebound at 10 weight, this would be good for you. Oh yes, that's money. See how she kind of looks, you know? And then if you turn your rebound down, all the way out, nice and easy to move this. Now it should be a little bit more pogo-y. So there you have it, guys. I mean, that's it. And uh, have a good night, and hopefully it helped you out. And uh, good luck with your set. Thanks for watching.